I'm going to help Bishop. What about you? When, when we talk about kingdom rest or the rest of God that the writer is discussing and describing, the rest of God is really a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He, the kingdom rest is really entering into the kingdom of God through Jesus, who is the Christ. He says, for we, in verse 3, who have believed, do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place, of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from his works. Now, we understand by the book of Genesis over in chapter number one, and it, it tells of God's own decision to utilize his creativity, and, and God began to speak into existence a, a world, a society, a kingdom that did not exist before. And the Bible uh, outlines everything that took place on the first day and on the second day, on the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day. And the Bible says uh, that he created everything that is, and on the seventh day, God rested. Now, everything that God needed the earth to have, he supplied it in the original creation. Whatever man discovers, whatever uh, man seems that uh, he uh, pierces down into the earth and finds, God already knew it was there because God put it there from the very beginning. And, uh, and so God, God is not surprised. And, and we take it and we put it into other forms and so forth. But God knew it was there all along. And God put everything in the earth that we would need not only at that time, but as long as the earth remained. God knew it. God put it there. And that there is nothing that has caught God by surprise. And so the Bible says that God uh, rested, uh, and, and God rested, which is representative of completion. When we talk about rest, we're talking about completion. We, we're speaking of totality. We're speaking of wholeness. We're speaking of finality or, or finished and, and or cessation of creation. It is the cessation of creation, but not the cessation of activity. God uh, finished everything in the six days, but it did not mean when we say God rested that God is doing nothing. But God is still operating and overseeing everything that he created. God's desire is and always has been to bring his people back to his original plan. The original plan, you remember, uh, he wants to restore the destiny with which God established us. The place of ruling and reigning in the earth. The place of having dominion and the place of peace and wholeness and rest. We know that all of that was lost in the fall of man. When man fell, uh, we lost our peace. We lost our rest. When Adam and Eve sinned, we lost our sense of wholeness and, and completion in God. And it was never the intention of God to have us to fall. God created us and he wanted us to exist in that permanent place of peace and rest, tranquility, overseeing and, and subduing and having dominion. And so it was not God's desire uh, to see us fall so that he could just pick us up and restore us. No, God wanted us to function in the place where he placed us. Uh, so he has always wanted us back. 
Ever since uh, Adam and Eve sinned and, and broke the covenant relationship and uh, when we were cast out of our place of peace and, and when we were put out of the garden, it, it was the intention of God, it is the intention of God to always restore us and to bring us back to the place of rest. And so, and so God, God then uh, uh, has made provisions uh, to bring us back to that restored place. Ever since uh, the fall of man, God's mission has been through the systems uh, that he's established to bring restoration to his people. Everything that God established in the Old Testament was to be done through obedience it was obedience by faith. Every command that God gave his people, when he uh, uh, chose the people, the children of Israel, they were to follow him by faith. And whenever they obeyed and followed by faith, it would be considered uh, that it was to make them righteous before God. You remember Abraham. Abraham, the Bible says that God called Abraham and told him to get thee out that I was going to make you a great nation and all the people of the world will be blessed through your family. And the Bible said that Abraham believed God and moved out by faith that God was establishing and restoring relationship through Abraham's seed and offspring. And because Abraham moved by faith, it was counted unto him as righteousness. He, he was made righteous by faith. Uh, Jesus Christ had not yet appeared, and so uh, God then would consider those who obeyed him by faith righteous, just like now we have been made righteous uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, before Jesus came into the earth to redeem man, it was by faith and obedience that God would consider somebody righteous. And so Abraham was full of righteousness because Abraham was full of faithful obedience obedience to God. And so as God dealt with his systems that, that followed, we, we know that there was the law of Moses. There was the tabernacle and the temple system. Uh, these were all direct representations of the coming Messiah, the law of Moses. When we read in the Old Testament, uh, that, uh, that was a coming, that was a representation of the coming Messiah. It, it was to begin to direct people into right relationship with God. The, the tabernacle that, uh, that they would go and present their offering, their blood sacrifice for the atonement of sin, it was all pointing to the coming Messiah Jesus the Christ and uh, Jesus would be the final method of bringing God's people into the rest of God and so it was to be entered into only by faith when God was moving his people from bondage of Egyptian captivity to the promised land it was uh, symbolic to entering into restored relationship with God as the father and the king of his people. And so they were in captivity. They were in bondage in Egypt over 400 years. And they cried unto God. They, uh, they wept unto God. And God said, I've heard your tears. I've heard your cries. And, and he sent Moses down to tell Pharaoh to let uh, his people go and and he says that I've got a prepared place for you God knew we had lost our place of rest but God loved us so aren't you glad that he loved us so that that he didn't want to leave us hanging out there and God said I prepared a place for you and it's a place that's flowing with milk and honey it's a good place. It's a place of peace. It's a place of rest. It's a place of wholeness. And, and, and you will be my people, and I'll be your God. And, and, and God uh, uh, was bringing them out of captivity and directing them to the promised land. And the Bible says that the people rebelled against God and did not enter into the rest. 
God said, all you've got to do, when he sent Moses and Moses uh, secured their release from Pharaoh, the Bible said they came out into the wilderness and it was supposed to have only been an 11-day journey and it ended up being 40 long years. I wonder, is there anybody in here this morning who should have already come into your place of rest, who should have already accomplished something God said, but because of a sense of rebellion, uh, because of a sense of stubbornness, we're still walking around missing what God said. Said, and this is what happened to the people, and they rebelled against God, and they could have been in enjoying what God said, enjoying the rest of God. It was because of evil unbelief. They murmured against Moses. You brought us out here. Uh, uh, God just brought us out here to kill us. Uh, uh, we we want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back. At least we had three meals a day. We want to go back to what we were comfortable with. We want to go back to the things that we understood. And, and, and we don't want to go into this place. We want it, but we don't want to go. And, and, and that's how it is sometimes with us. It, it's because of a stubborn, evil unbelief. That entry was to be the pattern for what was to come but those who refused to believe did not enter. All right? So, so, so those, the Bible says, who believed entered in. Uh, there were only a couple who entered in, Joshua and Caleb, and the generation that did not murmur against God. They were able to enter in, and, but the others, because of their evil unbelief, because of their rebellion, because of their stubbornness, uh, they missed the rest of God. 